Shalom, call Halal, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Reka Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you I say Shalom. To the Akiam and to the Akwath, I will be you brothers and sisters. Adawan Rataza, that is to say, Lord willing, hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll be edified. This is your brother Amawan Ibad, back again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shai. Uh, as commanded, we are to feed the sheep. So through the spirit, um, I'm going to speak on what the spirit allows. Whatever comes to mind, I'll speak on. Didn't have a topic or um, a lesson plan. So I'll just be going through the spirit extem extemporaneously, shooting from the hip, so to speak. You know, uh, we're in a time where we have to... Uh, try our best to um, exhort one another daily and you know as you can see a lot of things is going on around the world you know not only uh, here in uh, the daughter of Babylon aka America things are going on around the world things are happening you know I was listening to the news last night and I was listening to the president elect speech now you know today is the um, today is the 20th right Today is inauguration day. Who knows what could happen? They have about they say about twenty five thousand troops in D.C. But uh, nonetheless, I was listening to uh, uh, President Elect Joe Biden. I was listening to his speech yesterday on on, on uh, YouTube. I was listening to a speech that he that he gave, but I was watching it on YouTube. And he was talking about he was saying he said he want to he want to vaccinate. You want to vaccinate a hundred million people, you know, a hundred million people in the in his in his first one hundred days. Okay, <laughs> you want to vaccinate? He wants you to get that job. All right, say you got a job. You want to you want to vaccinate against the Crown Royal Nine? You want to vaccinate a hundred million people? In his first 100 days, now America only has about um, 350, around 350, somewhere around 330, could be mistaken, 330, somewhere around there, million people. So if it's if, if, if in his first 100 days, 100 million people in his first 100 days, well, he said it, he said they're going to have to move heaven and earth to get this job done. <laughs> to get to get you to get the job. You know? Take the vaccination. They're going to have to move heaven and earth. Why? Because they know ain't nobody interested in that. Ain't nobody interested in that shit. Only fools and people who ain't got no sense. Okay? <clears throat> right? And they keep saying, you know, they've been saying uh, 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 they need to deal with uh, so-called black and brown people first. Which are the, which are the, the, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native and uh, Native Americans, who are who are if their blood lineage goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are Israelites. Okay, so they saying they gotta, you gotta be jabbed first and vaccinated. Why? Why must that be? Has they ever put us in the front of the line for anything good in over over 500 years? No, they never did not. If, if, if the vaccination is so good, how are they going to skip over their own people and just and come to and come to our people? Huh? They never did that in 500 years. You think they're going to do it now? Huh? Hey, you people better wake up out there, man. You people better wake up. All right, so let me get a, let me get let me get my first scripture, man. Because hey, 
Come on, man. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Let's read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. It says, Lest Satan, and the word Satan, when you go into it in the Hebrew, is Shatan, which means adversary. Okay? Lest Satan, which means adversary, should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. We are not ignorant of their devices, man. Okay? We know about the Tuskegee experiment. All right? We know how people was experimented on and all these things. I saw a commercial with a brother, uh, 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 Manata Zatbaka, the South Carolina, uh, GMS South Carolina, was, um, was showing yesterday with these these jakes doing this commercial begging people to get the job and how it's good and it's safe and it's, it's, it's clinically tried properly and it's good and we know what happened in the Tuskegee experiment and we got to do better and it'll never happen again and all this other bull crap they're talking in, in this commercial you know <laughs> but why are they selling it so hard why are they pushing it so hard why they need you to get vaccinated so bad you know come on man once again, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11. Lest Satan, which means adversary, should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. No, we are not. Okay? We know what happened to the, the Native American Indians who are the tribe, who are, who, who are the, um, the, uh, uh, the, northern, the northern kingdom of Israel, who came to the Americas, okay, by way of, uh, of, uh, of through Asherah, Okay, when you read Second Ezra thirteen chapter around about the fortieth verse, it tell you about the, those were the lost ten tribes who were uh, 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 taken captive in Assyria, but they went into a further country where no man dwelt to keep the laws there that they didn't keep in their own land. Roughly paraphrasing, so the, the Native Americans, the the, the, the the native the native uh, people was in America long before Christopher Columbus, okay? And they are, they are the Northern Kingdom, which are Israelites, all right? And what happened when, 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 uh, when Esau got here? What he did? He gave them smallpox in a blanket, man. Okay? Their history, their history. When you, when you go into secular history, it, it lines up with the Bible and all, man. It lines up with the Bible. It lines up with the scripture. Okay? Right? So, hey, that's there, man. As a matter of fact, let me see if I could uh, go to that real quick in the book of uh, Psalms. I think it's uh, chapter 55, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, remember, when Esau and Edom came to, to the New World, to the Americas, I find the northern kingdom here, okay, what they did. The northern kingdom was showing them how to till the land and showing them certain things, but what they did. They had plans and schemes and plots to take the land, okay, what they did. They gave them smallpox and blankets, man, okay. The scripture tell you to never trust thine enemy, okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12 and verse 10, and we could also get that, all right. So um, I'm in the book of Psalms. Uh, I think it's the 55th chapter Right about the 20th and 20th, 21st verse If I'm not mistaken Okay, there you go Psalms 55 and verse 20 Okay, it says He had put forth his hands Against such as be at peace with him So when it says he It's talking about Esau, Edom The so-called white man Okay, he had put forth his hands Against such as be at peace with him. Who is at peace with him? The Native American, the natives, okay? Who are, who, 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 who are from uh, 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 the Northern Kingdom, who are Israelites, who came to the Americas long before Christopher Columbus then got here, okay? There was, there was a peaceful people. He had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He had broken his covenant. Remember all those treaties, what they went into? With the natives, well, they broke all of those covenants. Okay, verse twenty-one says, Psalm fifty-five and twenty-one says, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, 
but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Okay? So hey, they came with the Bible in one hand, all right, and a sword in the other. All right, they gave the Native American smallpox, man, and blankets. All right, so hey, come on, man. Come on, man. You know, you know, you know, it's no going around these scriptures, man. None. You ain't no going around these scriptures anywhere you look at it. The scriptures say to never trust thine enemy, man. All right, and that's just what it is. Never trust your enemy. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus. All right. Uh, chapter 12 and verse 10 and let's read that okay because this is the book of our ancestors and it tells us what to do so Lucky, I'm going through uh, security real quick good morning how you doing when is the ends alright so Lucky, <clears throat> I just reached to work here and um, I have to go through security real quick but yeah uh, continuing on uh, this book belongs to our ancestors man the prophets, okay? This is the Lord's word, okay? But our ancestors wrote this book, okay? So um, this is Ecclesiasticus, the book of Ecclesiasticus, otherwise known as Sirach in the Apocrypha, right? So let's, let's, let's read some of this because this give us warning, okay? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 10 it says never trust thine enemy for as for like as iron rusted so is his wickedness okay though he humble himself and go crouching okay and go crouching right it says yet take good heed and beware of him and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hadst wiped a looking glass. Okay? Alright? And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. So hey, they cannot be trusted, man. Verse 12 says, Set him not by thee, least when, the, least when he had overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou art the last, remember my words and be prick therewith. All right? So, hey, it is what it is, man. It's, it's, no, going, it's no going around this word, man. It's no going around this word. It is what it is. Okay? Never trust thine enemy. And guess what? If you do trust them and take that vaccination and get the job, that's on you. That's on you because you've been warned. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17 said, uh, Son of man, I make thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, give them warning from me. So we're here to warn you. So if you take that job after you've been warned, that's on you. This is the book of uh, uh, continuing on, Ecclesiasticus, otherwise known as Sirach chapter 12 and verse 13 it says who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beasts so if you take that chance you on your own okay so one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins who will pity so who's gonna pity you if you get this jab and then after you get this jab you you end up in uh, uh what's, what's what's this thing called uh palsy uh, I think it called uh, with the with the facial when your facial your face start to uh, like 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 deform a little or change. Uh, I think it's called palsy. People take the job, the vaccination, and, and end up with palsy and stuff like that. All right, it said who uh, um, verse fourteen again. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? For a while he will he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. Okay, verse 16 says, An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart, meaning his mind, he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. Okay? 
if adversity come upon thee, and thou shalt find him there. <clears throat> if adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. Yet shall he undermine thee. Okay? He will shake his head and clap his hands and whisper much and change his consonants. So, hey, ain't no going around these scriptures, man. These scriptures, the word of the Lord is pure. It tells you that in the book of Proverbs, chapter 30 and verse 5. Okay, 2nd Ezra chapter 15 and verse 2. Faithful and true. The word of the Lord is faithful and true, man. Okay? This book is the living waters. There's no going around it. When you read Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11, it says, So shall my word go forward. They shall not return unto me void, but they shall go and accomplish that which I sent them to accomplish. Roughly paraphrasing, the word of the Lord is not going to turn back to him void. All that he say is going to come through, is going to come through. It tells you in the, uh, uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 16, None shall fail. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord, okay, and read. No one of these shall fail, meaning the, 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 the prophecies. No one of them shall fail, okay? <clears throat> to give you quick examples, World War I was prophesied. World War I was 1914 through 1917, okay? It's, it tells you that in the book of Revelation chapter 9 and verse 12. It says, one war has passed and behold, two more comes quickly. Revelation chapter 9 and 12. When you read Revelation chapter 11 and 14, Okay, it tells you, say, the second woe has passed, and behold, the third woe come quickly. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 14, the third woe has passed, and behold, Salakia, the second woe. The second woe has passed, behold, the third woe come quickly. So if World War I and World War II was prophesied over 2,000 years ago from uh, 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 um, John the Revelator on the island of Patmos. Those things already come to pass. World War II was around 1939 to 1945. Okay, those things already come to pass. World War Three is prophesied. Okay, Revelation chapter 8 and verse 13 where it says, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay? All right, by reason of the trumpet that has not been blown. Okay, you just go there and read it roughly. I'm just roughly paraphrasing it. So what makes you think World War Three is not going to come to pass? World War I was prophesied, it came to pass. World War II was prophesied, it came to pass. What make you think World War Three is not going to come to pass? That's one of the prophecies that we're waiting on right now. Okay, surely the Lord will do nothing but he reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Okay, we were prophesied to be scattered into all nations. That happened. When you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it speaks about the blessings and the curses. Well, our, 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 our forefathers broke the covenant, so we live under the curses. Okay, and that's what happened to us. We were scared. We lose our heritage. We, there was a falling away, and we lose our heritage. You tell you that in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 4. And even thou shalt thou thyself will discontinue from thine heritage. Okay, so that was prophesied it happened. We, went in, we were scattered into all nations, and then we went into slavery. All right? Going back to the northern, the northern kingdom, which was in America's long before Christopher Columbus got here, well, the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, they ended up in the Americas by being rounded up off the west coast of Africa and were made slaves, were brought here and changed on slave ships to come serve slavery in America. That was prophesied. The Lord say, you will serve your enemies. Okay? When you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68, okay? And, 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 and thou will go into Egypt again with ships. Okay, we could get that real quick. Showing you, and that's why the book of Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse uh, 33 says, The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. All that held them captives, whole, uh, whole, all that hold them captive held them fast. And they didn't let go. Roughly paraphrasing, but the Lord is their redeemer. Okay, it tells you that in the very next verse. 34. But uh, let me grab this real quick. Where's that at? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 68. Let me go there so I can just read it uh, 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 verbatim uh, for edification. But yeah, man. Hey, it's no going around these words, man. The word of the Lord is pure. Okay? This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse. 68 and it says and the lord shall bring thee into egypt again egypt is synonymous for bondage 
Okay, if to, to confirm that or to solidify that, just go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. It will show you that Egypt is the place of bondage. Okay, synonymous with bondage. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Not the old ancient Egypt. It's talking about the Americas. Okay, and the Lord shall bring you bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Who came to the Americas by ships? Our ancestors by way of slave ships. Okay. By the way thereof, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it again no more. It's talking about our homeland, Israel. Okay? Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold. Who was sold on the auction blocks in America? You so called Negroes, man. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And when it says no man shall buy you, he's talking about no man shall redeem you. That's why these curses are going to be on us until the Lord comes and redeem us. Until we go, I don't want to have to decide that I'm a part of that. Just to say, Lord willing, I'm a part of that precious number of the elect. Okay? Of the hopeful elect. You know? The Lord is coming to redeem his people. So these curses don't come off of you until you go up into those ships, man. You live under the, uh, under the curses, the book of uh, Baruch. 3 and 8, chapter 3 and verse 8. Baruch 3 and 8 says, Yet this day we are in our captivity. Okay? For a reproach, meaning a shame or a disgrace. Alright? And subject unto payments. That's why we pay so much bills in America. Alright? According to all the iniquities of our, forth, of our fathers. So our forefathers broke the covenant, therefore we live under the curses. So we, 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 we under the curses right now. We, we, we in our captivity right now. Okay, and to prove that, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 51 and verse 14. 51 and verse 14, we just read just now where it says in Isaiah Slaki and um, Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 60, 68 where it says, By the way whereof I speak, ye shall see it no more. It's talking about our homeland Israel. Well, check this out. Isaiah 51 and 14. The captives, who are the captives? We are, the so-called Negro, Latinos and Native Americans. The captive exile, hasten it that he may be loose. So we are the captive. Because the book of Baruch 3 and 8 says, Yet this day we are in our captivity. Okay, roughly paraphrasing. The captive, we are the captive, exile. Why are we exile? Are we exile out of our homeland, Israel. The captive exile, exile from our homeland, Israel. The captive exile, hasten it that he may be loosed and that he should not die in the pit. Meaning this system, when you go into the word pit, it's talking about system. Nor that his bread should fail. Okay. When you, when, you say, when you say the Lord's Prayer, it says, and, and, and give us our daily bread. So you need your daily bread. You don't want to, your bread to fail. Okay? So, hey, man, it's no, go, it's no going around it, man. So, hey, we're living in some serious times, man. The scripture, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1 says, And this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. And we're in those times. This is why you got you to gotta, you gotta be diligent and astute, man. You got to be wise and use wisdom. Okay, uh, uh, the book, uh, the apostle Peter says in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10, give diligence to make your uh, calling and election sure. So this is what you have to do, all right? The book of Isaiah chapter 33 and 6 says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So you got to dwell with wisdom in these times because if you're not, you're going you're gonna to get caught up into this system, you know? This, this devil is about to get busy. The scripture tells you, Revelation chapter 12 and verse 12, you know, the devil should come down having great wrath because he know that he has but a short time. Roughly paraphrasing. So the time is short for the, for the, for the, for the devil right now. So he's going to start to show his fangs. He's going to start to show his horns. See, right now, a lot of these people are outside here walking around blind and they, they, they believe in this system. They're going down to Egypt to look for help. You know, they're going down into Egypt. They trust in Egypt. They trust in the system, not knowing that this system is against them and got something for them. Okay? Remember the Georgia Guidestones. It tell you that they want to get rid of a whole lot of people, depopulation. The earth have 7.5, 7 7.5 billion people, and they say they want to maintain humanity under 500 million. Well, if you take, that's like about taking away 8.5 out of 10. 
Okay? So think about that, man. That's things for you to think about. Look up the Georgia Guidestones if you haven't heard about these things before. All right? So, hey, man, it is what it is. There's no going around it, man. So, hey, I'm going to leave you all with two uh, more scriptures. And hopefully you were edified, man, because, hey, we're in some serious times. And you got to be seeking the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Okay? You got to be seeking the Lord these times, man. You can't be playing around. This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. And it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. Okay? So if you use a low-lying fruit, hey, man, <laughs> be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. So, hey, if you can't get it, maybe it's not for you. Okay? But it is what it is. There's no going around it, man. I'm going I'm to get one more scripture and I'm going to close up because I don't want to be late. I don't want to go inside late. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. Okay, it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly. Okay, when you go into this word circumspectly, circum means circular. Okay, round. Speck means to look. Circumspectly, look around. Be alert. Be astute. Dwell with wisdom. Apply wisdom. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what is the will of the Lord, what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and, and, hum, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto the Most High and the Father in the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, submitting yourselves one to another in fear of the Most High. And the fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. And also, that's the whole duty of mankind. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13 tells you, let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear the Lord and keep his commandments, which is the whole duty of mankind. Hopefully you were edified. I'm going to end it there. I'm going to go ahead and give all honor and glory and praises unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. Adawan Ratazar, that is to say, Lord willing, until the next time. Shalom.